Hello class, hello YouTube. I'm Trader Rick from Swing Trade from Scratch where we focus on all things swing trading education online. Welcome to this week's outlook and recap video for swing trading. What a week it was, a lot to recap and a lot to look forward to. The CPI print really shook things up and caused quite a drastic sell-off and it's yet another example of how to trade in a bear market. So thankfully that's been my mentality all year long. Uh, I closed out another trade this week that I was short on to move my record up to 9-2 and two with two break-evens or ties in there uh, as well. So 9-2-2. Two and two. We'll recap the quarter after the quarter is over. But for this week, I'm going to talk to you about the short that I closed out on Apple. Amazon was a name that I talked to you about last week with my plan in the video and in my email watch list. Ended up putting that trade on short after the CPI print. And then the new stock that I'm really watching for this week is that S&P ETF again, um, SPY. So I'm going to be looking at that one. The key level is 380 or 3800 you might hear. This is a widely known key level. And I'm going to show you my plan to trade it on either side. If we do get like an oversold bounce that we are recently coming off of, or if we see more pain as these recessionary fears these high inflation fears, the hawkish Fed, and the earnings cuts uh, start to kind of roll in here. So we'll see what happens and be prepared to trade on either way. So hopefully you're learning from my example to become a better swing trader and to figure out the best way to approach trading this current market. So with that, pretty simple this week. We're just going to take a look at those three stocks primarily and also talk about a uh, name that's worth watching that has been for some time. So stick with me. Thank you. I'm going to get into more detail about what happened in the stock market last week. As you kind of look here with me at the 30 minute chart with the price action for the entire week. Uh, first thing that stands out is that big red candle on the pre-market here on Tuesday. This was after the CPI report came out and the narrative that had kind of taken hold was one of peak inflation, peak hawkishness by the Fed, and with a hotter print than was expected for the month of August, this kind of brought in the reality of what's really going on and what the Fed is facing out there. So traders and investors finally got some evidence that the Fed is going to have to continue to be aggressive to fight against inflation becoming entrenched where expectations for it remain high. The Fed definitely doesn't want that based on history, and that's what Mr. Powell's been saying, um, especially the last two times that he spoke. So with that, that triggered the sell-off, and then some things that extended it were earnings estimates being cut with warnings from companies like FedEx. That really didn't help things, as well as some of the material companies uh, cutting their estimates and warning as well. So that is kind of what explains this downtrend on the week. We have the FOMC meeting on Wednesday the 21st this week. 100% probability of at least a 75 basis point rate hike has been priced in based on the Fed Fund futures market. So we'll look for the reaction off of that. A couple points about swing trading. With the CPI report coming out Tuesday, um, at 8.30 or 7.30, depending on your time zone. Monday probably wouldn't have been a good day to enter in any swing trades. And I kind of regret not talking about this last week. I was thinking about it um, during the trading day on Monday. Like, oh, shoot, I should have said that. But um, So I didn't enter anything on Monday, but I wish I would have shared that advice. It was a good day for stocks. Higher and looking like the week, if it was a normal week, uh, might end up being better as that rally from the previous week kind of extended um, on that um, oversold bounce that we saw. So you get the economic data and then you see it basically falling off of a cliff here. So this week with the FOMC meeting on Wednesday, I'm not gonna do any new trading Monday or Tuesday. I wanna see what the reaction is. I wanna see what Chair Powell says on Wednesday and then after the press conference at the, in the two o'clock hour, that's when I'll decide, okay, do I want to do anything today? Probably not because we've seen such volatility on those days and then kind of shape my view for the next day. So when I talk about trading 
the S&P 500 ETF here this week. And we'll get into now looking at this new stock and how to trade it. I'm not really going to plan on trading this until after the meeting. So if we look here, 380 is a key level that's been called out for quite some time here. I want to see what happens the day after the Fed meeting. Does it hold up above 380? Is it even trading near 380? But I want to see a bounce off of 380 for a long. So it looks to hold up as support. And then I could join the trend up higher. You see the resistance price targets up here. Uh, 380, 850, and 450 on the long side would be my plan. And this is just simply a technical play where you kind of mix, where I kind of mix in the fundamentals based on what the Fed is saying and what the new narrative that the market seems to take hold of. But overall, I definitely still remain with my bearish view. And I'm really just trading this based on the technicals here. So if 380 fails and we see more pain and destruction this week, then I'll look to go short uh, underneath 380 and take advantage of that deterioration. So I have price targets lower here at 371.25, 367.75, and then I have a final one here at the low of 360.69, which was made on June 17th. So recessionary fears are starting to kind of hit home after that warning from FedEx. A lot of people grabbed onto this idea that it was indicative that a recession hadn't yet been priced in, which is kind of surprising as you've kind of heard in the media and widely held belief was that recessions already priced in, rate hikes are already priced in, and there's nowhere to go but back up but you see this wasn't really the case. So that recession hasn't been priced in to the fullest extent. And that means that it is likely, maybe not this week or next week, but it is likely that those lows will be tested once again. So that's my overall leaning, but I'm gonna trade this stock or this ETF based on the technicals for a short term swing trade. So that $380 level for the SPY, I'm gonna be watching that with a telescope this week after the FOMC meeting. Then here's McDonald's yet again. I'm leaving it on the list. It kind of held up decently this week. It has performed well in recessions in the past, but if it does break out above the all-time high, I want to join that trend on the long side. So it's not off the menu yet, um, but not likely to reach that level that I'm interested in anytime soon. So still on the menu, doing better than the Big Mac snack wrap. Apple is up next. This was an ongoing short that I had. Again, based on the technicals, weakness under the $171 level, went short, got that negative catalyst, took profit there, took profit here, gains of 585 and 935 a share. Let's see the piggy bank, boom, boom. And then traded sideways, moved higher, was considering cutting above 164. This was Monday, CPI print comes in and boom, pushes this stock to my final price target at 151 on the 16th, a gain of 18.85 per share. So that red apple finally landed, knocking out Isaac Newton, who I heard was a large shareholder in Apple. So knocked him out, profited on the short here. This was a net gain of 11. 23 a share for return on investment of 6.6%. So this right here is an example of how you trade in a bear market. You rely on the technicals, you lean short, and you take profit on those bad days and on those negative news when the selling pressure ensues. You don't chase longs up here like, oh, it's gonna, everything's gonna be great and come back to normal. You look at the RSI, oh shoot, the stock is oversold, it's likely to pull back, and then we see how much it has pulled back after that. All right, that's enough pre preaching. Can you tell I'm feeling pretty good right now? Lastly is Amazon.com that I put out my plan for last week. I went short after the CPI number came out. If we zoom to the 10 minute chart here, 
we can see exactly what happened. So I was talking about either 133 or 137 being a key level. If it broke out above 137 and showed support there, I was going to go long for a quick bounce. But if it broke, if it tested this level and failed, I was going to go short. Well, unfortunately, the test was a short one, uh, maybe like a five question, more of a quiz here, but didn't get to go short at this failed level once the CPI print came out. I ended up getting short here at 133.19 is where I got my order in at. So I went short there after the report in the pre-market. Now we gotta come all the way back, bear with me. No pun intended. So went short there, 133.19. Two days later, took profit at 125.60. This was a gain of 7.59 a share. And then the bad news with FedEx and the companies cutting their earnings estimates, the gloom and negativity on Friday, despite making a red candle, it did drop to that next price target at 121. So that's a gain of 1219 per share. And I am still holding out for 116. So that's what we've got going on there with Amazon. Um, didn't get that ideal entry at 137 because I didn't have enough evidence to show me that this bounce or that this level was going to fail. It just happened too quickly. So I had to jump off the cliff uh, from a little lower cliff than everybody else was free falling from that morning. But nonetheless, still gaining on the short side here. So that's what I've got. Um, just those four. Hope you have a good week and I hope that you are learning from my example here. All right, everybody, so long. Thank you.